very happy to be at River Studio Living Light Wellness Center with Shirley Ann Burgess and Laura Paulette. Shirley Ann is the owner of Living Light and we are really excited to learn a little bit more about what happens here. Uh, this is the home, I understand, of some of the finest yoga and body work in the area, so I'm really looking forward to learning more about that and um, to learn about some of the events and different retreat uh, things that they have going on. So thank you ladies for joining us today. Thank you, Lenise. Thank you. Um, I want to jump right into how we got here. So share a little bit about your background and uh, your transition or your way into doing this type of, uh, this type of work. Mm -hmm. um, mine started when I was about 13 years old. I uh, found a book in a uh, used bookstore called Paramahansa Yogananda and I started reading that and it talked about meditation and yoga and um, I started practicing on my own at 13. And what I realized was, wow, you know, it's a great way to get off of the, the monkey, the mind that keeps going round and round to get me off that train. And it helped me to really start, you know, I learned to concentrate better and to let go of all the stresses in my life. So yoga is, it continues to be um, a journey of mine um, to free me from all of these attachments. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's brought me to the, you know, to the work I do and the healing work I do. <laughs> Um, my story is much different. I kind of uh, came to yoga in a very convoluted way. I started doing yoga on my own um, after my second child was born. I had, was experiencing some um, sciatica and numb toes, and um, my mother had just started the first of a series of back surgeries, um, mm -hmm. so I was watching that play out. And, um, and at that point in Floyd, there wasn't really any place to go, so I just got some tapes and Lilius does yoga, the, the classic, you know, yeah. and just started practicing with the kids crawling around, you know, with me. Um, it wasn't until uh, my mom passed away a few years ago and just going through that whole life journey um, that I thought, uh, I'm going to do something for myself. Because up to that point, I had never been to a yoga class. Wow. And I said, okay. I'm going to go to yoga teacher training. There's a wonderful teacher, Anna Pittman, over in Blacksburg mm -hmm. that has an 18-month program. And I was able to, and those were the chunks that I could kind of absorb this in. Um, and so it took like a year and a half and Shirley Ann, my dear friend, was very uh, um, uh, accommodating and said, you can come, you know, teach at my, my studio. Oh, I really cool. didn't know what I was doing at all, <laughs> but people came and um, I felt better. I don't get bouts of sciatica anymore. I, it's amazing what it does to your, your body, your mental um, agility, your physical agility, your spiritualness. Mm -hmm. It just kind of combined, brings everything together. And as I got deeper and deeper into it and actually went to a training, I started learning more of the principles behind um, yoga and realizing that the, the asana, the, the, the poses that everybody sees, you right. know, oh, I can't do that, I'm not that bendy, is a very small part of the overall practice of yoga. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting system of uh, down-to-earth tools for living your life. Interesting. And, and having peace, yeah, with your body, with your mind, just as things are unfolding, I just, it is a, it is a wonderful personal practice, yeah. and it's led me to meditation, it led us to the Floyd Yoga Jam, yeah, which, which wasn't really on anybody's radar <laughs> at all, approach. but. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's yeah. interesting that both of you started sort of self-taught, you just kind of mm -hmm. got into this on your own and then yeah. really pursued something at the more yeah. professional level. Right. So that's encouraging. Yeah. You don't have to be a yogi to start off doing no. yoga or just... Well, and for me, I had pounded my body a lot up until that point. I'm a forester by training. Oh, so wow. I've, okay. I've been in the woods and hiked a lot and firefighting and that sort of stuff. So that was part of it too, is how do I, how do I support my body and stay flexible and be able to bend over and you know touch my toes when I've lived such a physical life right. you know, and have a little osteoarthritis and watching what my mom was going through with a degenerative spine and the issues she had. So um, yeah, it's, it's an everyday practice that can sustain your body. Your body wants to stay healthy. It wants right. to stay vibrant. Exactly. So this exactly. is a way to help it. And, and so you don't have to go into your 60s, 70s, 80s and bent over and lurching and exactly. that sort of thing, exactly. you know, without drugs. Right, right, exactly, that's wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. it's really encouraging to hear that the practice of yoga not only helps with the physical, but also with the mental and with the spiritual. So really bringing balance and health to all these different areas yes. of your life. I think a lot of people 
sort of, like you said, think about yoga as these very interesting, very mm -hmm. intricate, sometimes difficult poses, mm -hmm. and, and maybe aren't aware of these other areas that it really can touch and enhance. So that's really nice. Now, there are different kinds of yoga, without question. You've already said some words that if I were tested on to say them over, it just would not happen, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So are you each trained in different types of yoga, different styles, I guess, or modalities? I'm not sure what the right word is there, but... I, I don't have a certification in yoga. I started teaching, I created a program for Blue Mountain School in Floyd, Virginia, um, just about 12 years ago okay. as a yoga program. It was a little older, longer than that because my kids took your class. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Londa Terman asked me if I teach an adult class. And I, I've had, you know, I've, I've trained under a bunch of teachers, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and Yoga Alliance would be happy to certify me. But yeah. um, with all the certifications behind me with the raw pain massage therapy, I decided to just, you know, go ahead and move forward. So um, I, um, I've been teaching yoga for you know, 16, 17 years all Wonderful. Together, yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And is there a particular s style then that... Um, yeah, mine is a Hatha yoga, a real basic class with um, a lot of breath awareness and, you know, breathing, you know, into the body. And I come from a Rothian perspective, structural integration, so that helps a lot of people. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And I explain it, it to people as, um, you know, the word yoga is kind of like the word ice cream. And there's all sorts of different flavors of ice wow, cream. Wow, great analogy. So, so depending on who you who you resonate with or mm -hmm. who your your lineage or your teachers, there's there's many paths to getting to that place. Okay. And so there's um, so yeah, there's Kundalini and there's hot yoga and there's acro right. yoga, which is going on today, and there's hatha, which is what I trained under too. Okay. Um, so so there's plenty of room to find something that really speaks to you and you feel comfortable with. Ashtanga yoga, very different styles. Mm -hmm. But they're all yoga. They're all, okay, mm -hmm. all come mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And so as a body, again, obviously these different different modalities or different types, different flavors, as you will, of, of yoga um, help to support wellness. Are, is there one that might be better depending on what's going on with you than another? Or is it really just kind of whatever resonates with you and makes you the, feel? The common thread in yoga is to bring the, the union of the body, the mind, and the spirit. So when you can get somebody to pay attention to their breath and their body, and just bring an awareness into that place in their body changes everything. Because hmm. mm -hmm. if you have breath, you have movement in that part of the body. And, it's, and that means more blood flow and more oxygen. So that's the thread that is common with all types of yoga is to pay attention, bring yourself into feeling sensation in your body. Okay. okay. And the word yoga means union. Body. So it is trying to bring those things together. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, I know you've mentioned a little bit that you do some other stuff, massage and rolfing, and that happens here at the center. Tell us a little bit about those modalities and what they're like and what they're good for. Sure. And well, massage therapy is wonderful for stress release. You know, it increases the blood flow to the body. It gives a person a time or downtime to surrender and, and let go. And so through massage and movement, we're able to move toxins out of the body, elongate muscles, get more blood flow to the muscles. And then with rothing, which is a little different, it's more of a structure, it's structural integration. It's building the body back up onto its, um, so it's, you know, it can function better. So okay. we release a lot of old habitual patterns in the body. And it's, a, it's very different. The person is very active in the process of mm -hmm. rolfing. It's not just me working with them. It's them and I working together. Okay. And releasing patterns, physical, emotional Yeah, so patterns. if you have rounded, yeah, so if you have rounded shoulders and you've been here because you're at the computer all the time, well, it's really hard because the body, you know, what happens is the body lays down a lot of fascia, connective yes. tissue to support mm -hmm. you here. It wants to support you. So, it's, so that creates, you know, a neck that's up front. It creates, a, you know, compression in the belly, shorter legs. So what we do is we release that, open up the chest. The heart gets more, you know, um, more space so yeah. it can actually move again. And the lungs get more oxygen to them because they have more space and you've increased the, the, um, the capacity in mm -hmm. here. So uh, when you do you know release a habitual pattern what you've done is create a new space for someone to be in like they were when they came in as a child nice which yeah. is a good place to be right? mm -hmm. because children are super flexible and they are super you know they get back to healing very well and like adults who have these patterns that we kind of lay down that so sort in, of stick right. with us yeah so impinged yeah. you know we have an impinged nerve sciatica if you can release the muscles around that you know through the fascial work and um, then you don't, then the sciatic goes away. The nerve is no longer impinged, and so your pain goes away. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, how does your business or your craft 
support your own personal well-being? Well, I'm like anybody else, and I don't want to get on the mat on a regular basis. But if I have a class here waiting on me, I get my butt moving and ah, I get to class. So okay, it's, okay. Yeah, so that's my honest answer. But um, a little it, accountability going yeah, yeah, on there. Yeah. Okay, I'll uh, need that from time um, to time. Yeah, it it just feels good to feel good. Yeah. And when you can get past some of these blocks, or you can see, you know, I mean, even just folks my own age, and I see the, the impacts of time, of work, of driving, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh gosh, I want to stand up straight. I want to go as far as I can in life with a body that can support me, you know, so I can live an active life right up to whatever comes versus um, kind of succumbing to gravity and stresses and becoming more hunched and more, you know, can't breathe as much, maybe not sleep as much, you know, it's, it's all that. It's a holistic approach, really, right, to your body. And your and your life, and um, that's what I've you know found in yoga that allows me to to physically be able to support my life as I go through a, an active lifestyle. Right. You know, we farm and we live in Floyd, and sometimes you have to dig your car out of a snow, you know, <laughs> yes. you know, uh, a snow berm. And um, so rather than you know bend over to do that shovel and being your back goes out, your body is ready to support you. Wonderful, and, yeah. wonderful. And what about you and your practices? How do they support your own personal well-being? Um, well, I have a healthier body. I have more, you know, agility and flexibility due to the yoga. And I go to get rocking, you know, once a month, you know, for myself. I try to, you know, trade with some of the massage therapists in the area okay. to get, you know, body work twice a month. Um, I have a great yoga practice. I meditate every morning and um, just about every morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, yeah. And, you know, because I teach, I practice. Mm-hmm. So, right. You know, that's nice. the work of it. And can anybody do this as, you know, kids, older adults, people who haven't, you know, been farther than the sofa for a few years? Absolutely. You know? And that is a great question that we would really like to get out there, especially with the yoga jam in that. There is something for everybody. You don't have to be look like a pretzel. You don't have to have been practicing <laughs> for 25 <laughs> years. You know, and a lot of it is the breath. Is when you you just slow down enough. Yeah. Turn off all those electronic things. Slow down, even just for five minutes, and just breathe. Slowing. Down. That brings everything down. Brings your blood pressure down. It brings so you know just it's like okay now what would I like to do you know and so it's just kind of taking a moment in time to you know be present to be here in the moment. And then maybe you go and you do some stretching. But, you know, we, we teach classes. We do yoga with folks sitting in chairs. You can nice. do yoga. Yeah. A lot of what, if you go to a physical therapist, if you are getting occupational therapy, it's yoga-based. Some of these stretches have been around for thousands of years. Wow. And, that's, and they're still being used because they work. Right. You know, and it is about getting, you know, uh, and as you build up, you feel a little bit stronger. You can try a little bit more. You can fold forward a little bit more. So you try something new. Interesting. You know, and being being present in your body as you're doing that. Wow, I didn't think I could do that. Well, nice. well you can. So where can we go from here? So it's endless in that. And some in the, the you know the, our yoga masters and our 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 teachers will say, you know, every pose is endless. It's mm. per, you're perfect exactly where you are. There is no end point. It has to look like this. Where you are is exactly right. And just work here. And then, you know, you keep working there and you keep breathing there. And after a week, it's like, oh, yeah, I can bend a little farther. And what a nice mindset for Mm -hmm. a society that we live in that is always trying to get it right and always on the move, always got the monkey going. I know my monkey is uh, pretty restless sometimes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that there's something out there that can help you to slow down. And it doesn't require you to be an expert at it before you can get the benefits of it. And and the side effects are like, you know, a smile and you feel good. It's not like you can't sleep or, you know, whatever. I mean, pick a drug and- Gotta love that. You know. Right, yeah. And it's free. (laughs) Gotta love it. We had a yoga jammer show up last year and she took the laughter yoga class. And she said she recorded it on her recorder. Yeah. And now she puts it on her phone and she's, it's her, and for her aunt, and every time she hears that, she says she just laughs, and it makes her feel so good, and so she's not feeling depression anymore. Awesome. So, so I want to talk about this yoga jam because it's come up a couple of times. So tell me about it. What is it? When is it? Why is it? How is it? I want to know. I want to be yoga jam ready when it happens. So, and I want our audience to be yoga jam ready too. So tell me about this yoga jam. Where did it come from? What's it going to be? I want to know it all. Yeah. Um, Who's brainchild? Is it? Let's start there. Kind of collectively, and uh, I was teaching a class at yoga at uh, Shirley Ann's uh, former studio. This is the new space, and um, it was the end of class, and everybody was laying in the final pose, which is called Savasana. You're flat on your back. You've worked really hard. You're just kind of like relaxing into the floor, 
And we hear this little voice who says, um, we should have a yoga festival. And we kind of all sat up and looked at each other and said, yeah, we should. Yoga festival. But what okay. is that? You know, what does that <laughs> right. mean? What, what does that, that look like? So we started kind of brainstorming, doing research on what it would take, you know, just production and logistic wise. Mm -hmm. um, surprisingly enough, we've never been to a yoga festival. So this is just like us sitting down and saying, well, if we wanted to do this, what would it look like? And what would we want to have there? Awesome. And what is the feeling we'd like to have? So what does it look like? Oh, it's a wonderful site. <laughs> it's a really beautiful site. And um, yeah, Shirley it, it, found it's, us the place, yeah, basically. It's a wonderful community of people that come together that are like-minded, that want to change and take that change out into their worlds and make a difference. Um, everybody that shows up, you know, it's about coming there to educate themselves and taking it back into their world. Um, Mike Terman is the, the man behind the scenes, and he it's his land, and um, he was a client of mine in the past, mm -hmm. and he suggested, you know, using this land, and we went out there, and he's put up, you know, he built the stage and the bridges, and he's made it home for the yoga, and a um, big piece of that, his daughter does yoga and teaches yoga, nice. and he wanted to give back to her in some way, and this by, give, you know, supporting us in our dream, and that's what... You know, and that's what we're doing, making awesome. the dream happen. Wonder. Yeah. So when does Yoga Jam happen? It's August 29th, 30, 31st. People can come in on the 28th, Thursday at noon, and, and set up their tent um, and pack out on Monday, Labor Day. Wonder. So it's, a, it's taking it easy. So it's the 28th through the 1st. Okay, okay. And around it's, the same time every it's year? It's every Labor Day weekend. Every Labor and Day we, weekend. And we purposely okay. don't have any programming on Monday because a lot of people have that day off. Right. Um, it's a good day for travel, so rather than you know push everybody to that you know Monday and then have to go home because they are pretty relaxed and, and blissed out. So it's like you know take your time. You can leave Sunday night. You can breathe, stay breathe. the next day. Yeah. You can you know blissed yep. out sounds good yes. to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to be blissed yeah. out. That sounds really good. And then we open the gates at noon on Thursday, so if people mm -hmm. want to come early, get settled. The days start with um, different morning meditations. We've basically got four yoga tents now mm -hmm. um, with the programming. So the day kind of goes like this, starts at anywhere between six to seven okay. with different meditations and progresses up. We have alternating classes going on in um, multiple yoga tents. By about two, three, four in the afternoon, the yoga's starting to wind down and then we have acoustical music and then on into um, amplified music into the night. So you so that's where the jam part comes from. Nice. So you, okay. you yoga out, you try a new class. You know, we've got this year, we've got a yoga 101 for people who don't know anything about yoga. Basic. That would be just me. come. <laughs> yeah. We also have yoga for dudes. So no excuses. The dudes can <laughs> come it, too. Love it. All you and, guys <laughs> let's, let's get it together. And you'll make your wife very happy. Oh. And your girlfriend very happy. And um, we have a kids bill, which has uh, crafts, arts, um, yoga, music for the two to twelve set, okay. juggling. Um, we have an art village for people to let their little, their inner, you know, artist out. You know, because nice. often through life, you know, you get kind of starting from a little person, you start getting told that you're good at that or you're not good at that, yeah. and we invite people to come and just uh, explore their creative and play side. Nice, so it's yeah. a little something for everybody. Yeah, there's like. even a naturalist that will take people on wood floor walks and you know tell stories about the plants, and uh, we have a drumming circle for people in the wow. evenings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. we have mountain bike trails, 5K run. We're doing, we're uh, working with a couple uh, companies. One that's another Floyd company on the water mm -hmm. that is going to be doing kayaking trips and shuttling people. Wow, we have nice. stand up paddleboard trips with uh, check our website if you don't know what that is. It's really fantastic. So cool. we're going to be doing those trips too. Great food lineup. We mm -hmm. really part of we this. We love good food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we live in such a place that's so rich in food, yes. you know, and this heritage of, of uh, CSAs and little farms. So we kind of set the bar high early on because as we said, yoga is about union, it is about the whole body. So why would you want to go do seven hours of, of the amazing yoga and then put a corn dog in your mouth? It just kind of doesn't, you know, it doesn't support your body in the way it needs nutritionally. Right. So our, um, our food vendors are top notch. Awesome. And we have, we have local, we have Red uh, Rooster Coffee, we've got a new, uh, two new food trucks this year. One is a Thai food truck from a Thai woman in Blacksburg. Okay. The other is a local boy um, Will Hancock and Dylan Shankin, who are starting a um, Tex-Mex food truck. Oh, so we're going to be their first big event. Um, we've got a, a family from Blacksburg that does homemade um, ice cream and popsicles and homemade root beer. So you can actually get a 
organic root beer floats. Oh yeah, those guys are good. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah, who else? We have Dotacado, their salads and avocados and quinoa and that okay. sort of stuff. We have a raw foods manufacturer. Sounds we like have, you've got it all covered. Yeah, so you can get so after you know working your body that hard, you can put good fuel good stuff into it. In it, awesome, mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. You're definitely. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then you can dance your way into the night. You know. Right. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sounds like the place to be. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to be there getting my bliss on <laughs> over the Labor Day weekend. Yeah. So if people want to know more about the studio or about Yoga Jam, where can they go to get some information? You can go to www.floydyogajam.net and uh, you can get a lot of information about the Yoga Jam there. Or you can also, for the Living Light Wellness Center, River Studio, uh, livinglightemployed.com. Very good, and we'll make sure that we make that information available so everybody can get out there and get in touch with these two ladies and what they are doing. Other than Yoga Jam, any other exciting things on the horizon for you all? Or I'm sure that's probably enough right now, but... Uh, this oh, is a full-time job. I bet, I bet. <laughs> we do have a few kirtans, which is devotional music, um, happening here at the River Studio in July. You can go to the website and find out more about that. And we have a man, Bill Smith, is coming up to do sonic medals with gongs and bells. It'll be a concert here. So I'm looking forward to that also. Yeah, so def- definitely check the website because there's things going on all the time. And as... You know, we get settled here and we're moving forward. We want to add more, you know, year-round events you know, here and hopefully out at the site because it is such a beautiful site. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, make sure you get on those websites and keep it, keep in tune with what's going on out there. And I'm sure information is updating all the time. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you ladies for being on the interview today. And um, I'm looking forward to Yoga Jam and finding my bliss and quieting my monkey and all of those kinds of things. And uh, we'll definitely have to get back together with mm-hmm. you again as you continue to do more things. We'd love to have you back again. Well, well thank you so much, Denise. And we'd love to have your cameras out there so you can get some on-the-spot interviews with people who are blissed out. Blissed out. That's got to look good <laughs> on camera. Wonderful. We'll look forward to doing that. And welcome to another segment of Well with L. Today we're here to talk about stress and we're asking the question, is stress making you sick? It's no secret that everybody's got stress in their life. People are actually wearing their ability to manage their stress almost like a badge of honor. For far too many, being stressed is just a way of life. But it begs to ask, is stress making you sick? And just where is all this stress coming from? If you ask most people where their stress is coming from, they will say it's situational types of things like the job, bills, relationships, even traffic. But actually, stress can come from many different places, places that you might not suspect. In truth, stress is certainly situational, but it can also be environmental with allergens, mold, or even household cleaners can be causing you stress. Emotional stress is another big area. Things like being angry or fearful or worried or depressed actually create a stress response in the body. Structural stress is another big one for people. Poor ergonomics when you're lifting or sitting behind a computer all day long or spinal misalignment can cause a lot of stress on the body. Behavioral stress is another major area where stress is concerned. Not getting enough sleep or doing too much exercise, again, creates a stress response. And lastly, dietary stress. And I know nobody really wants to hear about this one, but if you have nutrient deficiencies, if you're out there doing a really strict diet, or you've got food sensitivities that you might not even be aware of, stress is there, even in your diet. As you can see, we can't really escape stress. And while all stress isn't necessarily bad, I mean, you could be planning for a vacation or maybe a new baby is on the way. Heck, maybe you even won the lottery. The truth is, too much of a good thing isn't necessarily a good thing. 
Anytime you're stressed, your body goes through what we call a stress response. You might know it as fight or flight. And it's just the way that we're wired. There's nothing that you can do about it. So that's something we'll have to accept. What your body is doing is gearing you to take action against the stress. And so different body systems jump into action. Your blood pressure goes up, your blood sugar is elevated, your respiratory rate changes, even your immune system begins to do different things. This is really all fine because again, it's the way that we're wired, the way that we're programmed. But the wiring is meant to only happen for short periods of time, small stresses that occur, and then they're over with and all systems go back to normal. Unfortunately, most of us don't live, live lives like that. We live lives of constant chronic stress. So as you can imagine, if these systems are being altered, they might be in a constant state of being altered. And ultimately, yes, this can cause problems and it can definitely make you sick. So what are we supposed to do about it? Fortunately, learning some effective stress management techniques has been shown to make concrete health benefits. So before you get too stressed about being stressed out, here, there's the good news. Following some simple stress techniques can help both lower your stress and lower your risk for health problems. In the short term, you can do things like just focus in the moment. So much stress is caused about worrying about things that have already happened or things that are getting ready to happen. And guess what? None of that is reality anymore. So focus in the moment and don't worry about what hasn't happened yet or what has already occurred. You can also try to reframe your stress. See problems as an opportunity to do something new, do something different, or try to do something better the next time around. Also, developing an attitude of gratitude is a great way to deal with stress because sometimes we become so focused on the one thing that's got us stressed out, we forget about all the incredible things that are happening in our lives. In the long term, regular exercise, a proper diet, adequate sleep, even taking up yoga or meditation are wonderful ways to help you deal with stress. Now, you might not be able to move, remove all of the stressful things from your life, but you can change how you respond to them. Getting good at any of these approaches will take a little time and practice, but the payoff for both the short and the long term of your health can be substantial.